Hey folks, let's go over a bit more about the Radcliffe Wave featured in the morning show. We're going to hit the initial reporting from our video archives, the articles that came after, and then return to the discovery we hit this morning. Let's go back to 2022. They have now mapped what is a likely feature of the previous wave to pass by our solar system, likely triggering the events surrounding the Gothenburg reversal and the Younger Dryas, a galactic scale gas wave that they're calling the Radcliffe wave, and it's sitting right behind our solar system from the galactic center's point of view. They have mapped the surrounding gas of the solar neighborhood with some satisfaction, but it was much easier to denote it against the brightness of the galactic center in the past. What's against the blackness of the cosmos hiding behind on the other side has been another story. But now we have it, and indeed we're seeing something very much like what's in front of us. A curving, rippling, damped sine wave pattern hugging the galactic plane and rippling high above and below. That is precisely the description for the galactic sheet, or rather, the gas and dust caught in the leading edge of it. Just like happens in our solar system with the sun's current sheet. So to be clear, this is not some super bright or obvious thing. The red is just so you can pick it out. In fact, it was just the opposite, much harder to see. And indeed, it is the low mass star formation filament and surrounding molecular cloud that has indeed been known to sit behind us for a long time. Although this new measurement does quite a bit more in characterizing the shape and suggests it's considerably further behind us than this. We knew it was there, just not how perfectly rippling it was around the galactic sheet. As for the cloud wave in front of us, still coming at us, well, that's not addressed in the new work. But they figured out a long time ago that strong magnetic fields held it together, another description of the wave riding the galactic sheet. While in 2010, the Voyager and Ibex craft could only suggest we were on a collision course with a massive gas cloud, today we do believe it has begun engulfing our system already. As our series described, we're seeing the starting effects already, but we've not quite hit the critical point in the event yet. And we are back to today. It was only a few months later that they confirmed that this wave was distinct from the known galactic warp and found that this wave went throughout the galaxy. This is the galactic current sheet wave. A subsequent study found that this wave oscillates around the midplane, as expected, and that its amplitude matches the previously suggested amplitude for the galactic current sheet perfectly. Another team attempting to model the Radcliffe wave feature finally was able to do so using a wavy midplane model, the same model we use in the galactic current sheet science. And then the amplitude was confirmed once again, and they also confirmed that the dust and gases also matched the wave of stars they discovered first. This new discovery we hit this morning is only further suggesting that the wavy midplane current sheet is working those stars and the dust and the gases in a significant way. If it was a distinct, a distant, or one-time effect, it would not be oscillating. But in fact, the wave passes by regularly in astronomical time scales and works that oscillating wave feature. While the other evidence of the current sheet in our galaxy and others is more than convincing, I do have to say that the Radcliffe wave is one of my favorite pieces of evidence. I'll see you in the morning for the Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.